Okay, another day in paradise. We're pleased to get the 7R AJ finished, X Mike Hillwood. Robert is the proud owner of this bike, so he's asked us to give it the full Miller treatment. So we've given it the Miller treatment. Jim will fire it up in a moment. We'll do a few laps of demo. Uh, happy memories for me. 1953, Cookstown 100, uh, Miller's first race bike was a 7R AJS, the earlier model in this, and he managed to win the race. Easy peasy. Couldn't believe how slow the rest were going. Of course, the AMC AJS, the Porcupine, the V4 Supercharged AJ, they led the world in British great racing machines. Mike Hillwood, 1960, he won three TTs and he was leading the 350 class possibly on this bike here and on the last lap when he was leading the crank pin broke Solby Bridge probably revving it too hard So I just want to say for everybody's benefit that obviously Mike Hailwood's memory needs no reviving at all, but his motorcycle really did. And I'm so grateful to Sammy and to Jim and everybody here at the museum, all of you, for everything you've done over the last year to get this one back on the road and back down to Goodwood as soon as possible. Excellent. Thank you very much. Pleasure, Robert. Cheers. There we go, 350 HT3, um, not Miller's favourite bike, I never rode one. And that's how I really started off with the production bike before I turned it into GOV 132. Shed hundreds of pounds of weight, converted the whole thing, me special frames and forks and wheels and wheelbase and stuff. But um, this is 100% original, this one, same tank. Very, very lucky to get it in an unmolested condition. So there we go, another one for the museum. See, it's just out there, do you see that? Yeah. Jim's gonna just throw up the clutch a bit on it. If you have a look here, you can see where it's running out of line. See the gap there? So Jim needs to just throw the clutch up with the springs. Right, we'll have a run around the workshop. Just recently, um, we managed to find and purchase for the Museum Trust. Um, very rare 1935 Triumph Twin, the first vertical twin, 650cc. Not designed by Turner, but by Val Page, who later went to Ariel as you know. So we've already started work on it and uh, we'll just run through where we've got to. Strip the down, we're down to the bare chassis now. Girder forks, dampers on, dampers on here. Um, very earlish early, looking frame. Uh, of course, Val Page later went to there. Maybe we have a look at the engine first. Jim's got the engine over here. Vertical twin, gear driven, helical gear. You see how the twin gears, that's so you don't get any noise. You don't know, remember the bore and stroke of this thing, Jim? It's a 70 mil bore. Stroke off the top of my head, you'll have to yeah. look it up. So, found some new rings to put in. You've got flat new rings, where were they? In the yes. toolbox? In, oh, in our well worthy departments in the museum, Jim's just found a set of brand new rings to put in, so that's lucky. So, there you go. Once again, if the gearbox goes that way, the engine runs backwards. So, new Imperial, the 150 new Imperial, um, all gear driven. 
engines have to run backwards to get the gearbox going that way. The rocker gear is all very, very much like aerial. Um, there you go, Jim would tell you that's almost identical to the later aerials when Val Page designed it. The, sh the shape of the head castings, and if you imagine each barrel individually, just like a 350 aerial. The shape of all this finning here, yeah. it's got oil feed to the inlet valve guides, which is another feature that aerials used at the same period, early 30s. It's all Val Page design. Semi-unit construction, as you can see, the gearbox is bolted to the back of the crankcase. So we call those semi-units. And of course, if you want to adjust the interference on the primary gears, you can shim the back of the gearbox to get your tolerance. So the wheels, again, uh, we're just stripping those down. A bit like BSA, the spline drive for the rear hub. We're going to strip all those down and um, we'll get the rims re chrome the sprokes re-zinked and put them back together again. This is some of the chrome stuff that we're getting ready. You can see they're a bit burned, what we do. We start have a big bonfire and get the silencers burn all the carbon burned out of them with a severe heat of the bonfire, which makes life easier for the platers. Aluminium rear brake plate, quite nice. That's the front one. So the speedo drive comes through here, and then the little gear drives the hub. That's quite interesting there. For some reason, obviously, Val Page miscalculated the oil capacity in the engine with, with, with its wet sump and obviously they had to add an auxiliary oil tank out external to get the quantity of oil so that it wouldn't get too red hot. The rear mud guards, they're quite unique with that flute down the middle. We've welded up some holes that they'd won sometime in its history which were not standard. Chassis, quite a heavy job. Luckily, it comes apart here and here because it, their grip blaster isn't big enough to get a full frame in, but if you can take the frame in two bits, easy peasy. So the, these are the forks, obviously Tron forks again, tapered tubes which are quite nice, and um, the inverted levers go in here, and that's the remains of a cable coming out of there, look. So what I'll do, I'll take all these cables off, send them to Dave, JJ Cables, and he'll make me up a set of cables. Uh, he's a professional, so it'll save us uh, a lot of time and effort making up cables. So handlebars will be coming off too. They'll go off for plating. That's quite unique there. Many of the manufacturers use couple brakes where the back brake operated the front brake, the front brake operated the back brake. So you got two brakes, which good idea. So that's where that is in there, two cables into there. That's one for the front and one for the back. So that goes up in there and operates. On here, I'm just having a look at the sprocket. Um, that's the final drive sprocket. That's a good sign there where, as you said before, if there isn't much wear on the teeth, you're in clover and another day in paradise because if the sprockets are not worn out, it hasn't done many miles. So this has done very few miles, I think. Very good condition, no tram lines, no big grooves. So that's uh, another breakthrough. So there you go, another day in paradise and um, 7R finished, HT3 finished. Triumph 1935 vertical twin, 650. One of the first Triumph twins ever. Great addition to the Triumph Hall in the museum. And uh, there we go. Cheers.